Here we're going to be looking at average cost inventory methods and what we're going to be comparing here is the periodic method versus the perpetual method. So let's start here with this periodic inventory method and this is where we use the weighted average method here to calculate our average cost of our inventories. So what do we have to do here using this periodic method? So for the period we have to uh, calculate the average cost of goods available during the period here. So what we're going to do here uh, and just to refresh our memories here we're using this period periodic inventory method. We start with our beginning inventory. In this example we're just going to use zero here. And then we have purchases for the period here. And then the beginning inventory plus our purchases are our goods available for sale. And then we're going to have some ending inventory here. And then we're going to subtract those from the available goods here. And that gives us our cost of goods for the uh, period here. So that's how we use our periodic inventory method. So what we have to do is we have to go over and we have to calculate it. Uh, calculate the weighted average cost of our goods here to determine what's in our ending inventory and also what our cost of goods sold amount would be here. We're not going to be working with uh, any revenues here. We're just going to be looking at ending inventories here and our cost of goods sold. So let's go up and look at our example here. Um, uh, for a specific period here we're going to have a number of purchases that we make here and then in this example we're going to have one sale here. And again we're not going to calculate any revenues here. All we're going to deal with is our cost of goods sold sold in our ending inventory. So let's go and look at how we calculate this weighted average here using a weighted average method. What we do is we take the all the purchases for the period here or it could be the beginning inventory as well. So we have this uh, purchased amount here of $2,000. Could easily represent our beginning inventory or this purchase here at $8 a piece and then we're going to have us a next purchase here at $6,000 at $880 a piece here a unit cost and then one last purchase here at $2,000 or at $950 each. So our weighted average method, all we do is take our quantity here times the unit price that we purchased it at and that gives us our unit cost here for it. So 2,000 times $8 each gives us 16,000 and then we have 6,000 here purchased at 880 each gives us $52,800 worth of inventory here and then we have 2,000 units at $9.50 each gives us $19,000 dollars here. So uh, totaling our total costs here, unit costs times uh, the units purchased times their specific quantity purchase price here, we get $87,800 here for their, for our inventory here for the period here. And then the total units that we have here would be the sum amount here would be $10,000. So just for our weighted average cost, all we do is take the total amount here of $87,800, the uh, unit cost for the period or the co total cost here for the period and divide those by the number of units in this case that we have here in inventory or what we purchased here. Uh, you, um, the 87,800 divided by 10,000 here gives us a unit cost here of $8.78. Now this is what we would this 878 is what we use to determine our ending inventory and then from our ending inventory we can determine our cost of goods sold here using this periodic inventory method. So uh, here weighted cost $8.78. Now for our ending inventory all we do is take the units that are sitting in our ending inventory times that weighted average unit cost here for the period and what's sitting in our ending inventory is the 10,000 units that we had uh, purchased here or sitting in our inventory less the $4,000 here that were sold our 4,000 units sold here so uh, 10,000 less 4,000 gives us an ending inventory of 6,000 units here times $8.78 gives us us our ending inventory here of $52,680. Now remember when you're using this periodic inventory method that's based on the amount of inventory computed at the end of the period and, and including the beginning inventory. Um, so what's our cost of goods uh, sold here? So we have our cost of goods available for sale. Well that came off our schedule up here where we're up off our uh, schedule up here for $87,800 and then less our ending inventory well we calculated that out here to be $52,680 so the difference here cost of goods available for sale less our ending inventory here uh, gives us our total cost of goods sold here of $35,120 so this is how we uh, calculated our, our using our periodic inventory method here we use this weighted average cost here method for calculating uh, uh, use the weighted average method here 
based on the number of units you purchase times their unit cost here and then you come up with this total dollar amount here and then just divide here your total dollar value here times the number of units sitting in your inventory for the period and that gives you your weighted average cost and from that you can determine your ending inventory and then your cost of goods sold. Now let's go down and look at the perpetual inventory method and this is where we use this moving average method here and we'll go through that here. So with the perpetual inventory method you use the current unit cost for costing withdrawals or sales in this case until another purchase is made then you compute a new average unit cost. So each time you make a purchase here you have to compute uh, new average unit cost again for each purchase there. So uh, going and looking at our example here we had um, a purchase let's just say this a six at the six one date here we had a purchase of two thousand dollars. This could also begin, be our beginning inventory but let's just say we had the purchase here of two thousand dollars. So let's go and calculate a, a, our moving average here uh, looking at our total purchases here uh, based on our sales amount here or withdrawal here of 4,000 uh, units here. So uh, for our moving average method here you take the 2,000 uh, units here that we purchased at $8 a piece that gives you the total value here at $16,000. And now we have, and that could either be our beginning inventory or a purchase here. Either case it comes out to $8 a piece here per unit. Now we make another purchase here of $6,000 or 6,000 units excuse me. So each time um, you make a purchase here you have to compute a new average unit cost. So here we purchase 6,000 units at $8.80 each. So the dollar value here, just taking the time, timesing these amounts here, we come up with a dollar value of $52,800. So now to compute our new um, moving average unit cost here, you just take the 2,000 plus the 6,000, that gives us 8,000 units here. And then we have our total value, dollar value here was $68,800. So take for the, for those 8,000 units here. So taking the $68,800 divided by 8,000 units here gives us a new unit cost here of $8.60. So there's our new unit cost here based on uh, these, this new purchase that we made. Now we've had this sales here of $4,000 for the period. So uh, 4,000 units, excuse me, here. So we take the 4,000 units here. Um, and then we're going to use this new unit cost here of $8.60. Take those 4,000 units times eight, the new unit cost of $8.60. That gives you a dollar amount here of $34,400. So to determine what our new balance is here, we just take the 4,000 here le uh, units less the 8,000 that was sitting in inventory. And then we take the 4,000 units here, their dollar value of $34,000 here and subtract it here from the um, inventory balance here of $68,800. So we come up with our new units sitting or the number of units currently in inventory here at 4000 and they're sitting here at $8.60. That was the last uh, computed uh, unit cost here based on that last purchase here. So that $8.60 times our 4,000 units here gives us again $34,400 here. And that's the same here, just subtracting $68,800. Uh, the $34,400 from our $68,800, that gives us $34,400. Now we made another purchase here of 2,000 units. And there was were made at $9.50 each. So their dollar value here is the 2,000 times $9.50 each gives us the total value here of $19,000. Now since we made this uh, new purchase here we have to come up with a new average unit cost up, up each time we make this purchase here. So all we're going to do here is we'll take our total units that we had at 4,000 here plus the 2,000 additional ones. So we got 6,000 here units sitting in inventory now. And then their dollar value here uh, would be uh, 34,400 plus the 19,000 here. Gives them a total value here of $53,400. So now to compact the new unit cost here, you just take the 53,400 divided by the 6,000 units here uh, sitting in our inventory. That gives us $8.90. So uh, taking uh, that's our new unit cost here based on this new purchase here of 2,000 units. So taking that uh, the 6,000 here times the new unit 6,000 units here times the new unit cost here of $8.90 gives us a 
total uh, dollar value here of $53,400. So you can see here the 6,000 units here at $8.90 um, equal $53,400. That's our ending inventory here. So we've calculated our ending inventory based on this perpetual inventory method. You're using our Mo moving average here method. And then uh, we only had uh, one sale here for the period that was of those 4,000 units, so that would be our cost of goods sold here. Uh, the f what we calculated here, the 4,000 units at $8.60, that equals $34,400. So that is our total cost of goods sold. So here we've gone over and we've uh, calculated our average cost on our inventory uh, using, let's just go up here and look at it again, for the periodic inventory method, you use this weighted average method here where you just take the total number of units that you purchased here and what or which you have in bedding in inventory and then you take them times the unit cost that they were purchased at or held at here in inventory then that gives us the it gives you their dollar value here and then take the total number of units that you have sitting here in inventory divided by their dollar value that gives your weighted average cost here and that's what you again you use for calculating your ending inventory and your uh, cost and your cost of your cost of goods sold here based on your ending inventory and the cost of goods available here for sale. And then just a review here for the perpetual inventory method here. This is where you have to uh, calculate a new a new unit cost each time you make a purchase. And then any sales or distribution out of that inventory, that's based on the unit cost that was sitting there based on or the current unit cost that you have. And then again, to determine your cost of goods sold, it was related here to the, in this case, it was to the current unit cost we have here and that we calculated. And then for ending inventory, again, that was based on the new unit cost here that we calculated times the number of units sitting here in ending inventory.